Okay, so I have my ice cream cone floating in space, and what I want to do with this is make it look like it's made of triangulated polygons, like really uh, sort of pare it down into sort of a base, very low poly kind of look. So the one thing that you can do is uh, is use uh, deformers. So uh, if you go to this palette here, I'm going to talk about these more today, but all of these tools you can take and apply to a model and you can do things like bend and bulge and taper and spherify and explode, all of these different things that can get you uh, to, to ma manipulate the model further. Uh, one thing that you can do here is polygon reduction. Right? So what that's going to do is you take this and you drop it on top of the model here and it's going to start to, you see what it's done? It starts to, if I take it off here, it's kind of smooth and then when I reduce the polygons it starts to triangulate it more, pixelate it essentially more. Uh, in the uh, attributes manager down below you have reduction strength so you can let you know reduce this uh, a whole bunch so you can apply you know if it's let's see go up here there you know, 99% and it's like almost nothing now okay so you know something can you can reduce it even farther back into this sort of formation um, so now that I have this when I look at it you can see that it's a much more kind of pixelated kind of point of view now I can take this a bit further as well. Uh, if you go uh, to the individual objects, so we have this ice cream part here, and then we have the, the cone part here. This little button here that looks like two little dots, this is called the Fong tag. And this has to do with how much the, the, uh, the model is smoothed out. How much do you see the lines, or how much is it smoothed out? So if you reduce this down to even like 10, uh, you can get this to be really the pic the polygons are really apparent so in each one of these I'm going to reduce it down to 10 and then you have this much more pixelated kind of view okay if you wanted to take this a step further you could also apply uh, what's called a displacer which is another tool that will uh, it's kind of cool actually I'm going to do this on another one really quickly here Let's ju I'm just going to show you quickly what Displacer can do. Let's open a new one up. Uh, I'm just going to grab a sphere, and let's take a look at the lines. So right now, uh, it is these sort of square polygons that wrap around it. Uh, if I want to change that, if I make it editable, but I hit the C key. I'm just going to go up to my mesh. Under Commands, I'm going to do Triangulate. And this is going to make those polygons into tri you know, triangles instead of um, in in those square forms. So now if I take the uh, displacer, what displacer does, it's pretty cool, you can, uh, you can if you drop it on here, nothing's going to happen. Uh, but if you go to this uh, palette down below in the uh, attributes manager called shading, you can uh, select a shader, and from the, in this case I'm going to grab noise, and you see what it does, all of a sudden it starts to like apply this noise channel to the surface of it. And so uh, if you uh, under object, if you inc increase the strength, if I bring this up, it starts to take those polygons and kind of like twist them and shape them around in different ways. So you see what it's doing to the surface? Uh, it's kind of making them into peaks and valleys and, and sort of shifting the, its orientation. So if you were to apply that as well to uh, the polygon reduction, you could get a form that is really, you know, simplified, angulated, so you can see those different faces, and then also reduce the fong angle down to maybe like 15 or 10 percent and you'll get something then that has much more of this sort of uh, reduced kind of poly look. Uh, what's important about that low poly look is that you need to have many different faces at different angles so they capture light in different ways. So when they cast across you get this sort of subtle shift of space. Uh, so if we again if we um, I'm just going to drop the generic physical sky in here so you can see. Now when we have the light casting in many different viewpoints you get you know different colors and different casts that sort of move across the surface so that's a way that you can achieve that sort of look